I'm here. We will be hearing from the representatives from uh, Danovat, uh, Fernando uh, Sainz, and Gerard Vidal on behalf of Enig Media. We ask them to let us know about the context in the machine to industry, how cybersecurity is affecting them, and thank you very much uh, for coming. I want to first of all thank the organizers for inviting us to be here and tell you about our use case, uh, our case study. Fernando Saiz uh, is uh, here on behalf of the Danobat group. He's going to tell us first uh, what we have contributed to make their uh, product more cyber safe or cyber secure, rather. Good morning, everyone. First, uh, first of all, I would like to start with a little bit of background about the Danobat group for those of you who don't know what we do. We are one of the leading manufacturers of machine tools in Europe, and uh, we are part of the Mondragon Corporation. You can see there that we have 13 manufacturing plants, uh, two of them with advanced manufacturing. Uh, you can see there the figures for R&D and I investment, which has a lot to do with us, in fact. And we make all sorts of uh, different machine tools. Uh, I'm not going to give you any detail on that, but uh, just understand that there are a number of companies, really, within the Danobat group. What do we do for Danobat? Well, we digitize products and services for machine tools manufacturers, and more so in the recent past. Uh, we have been specializing in machine tools, and not just there, but in other industries as well. You can see that claim. Uh, we say that we want to boost your digitization. What that means uh, is that uh, we have we can accelerate uh, the learning curve for manufacturers to be truly digitized. And here, uh, we would like to tell you what we've done specifically for an Enig Media technology, uh, applied it to a number of different machines. But if you want any more details about uh, the Danobat group, uh, please ask later. This is our current situation, our position. We might have an attack, say, from South America. Uh, how can we deal with that? We can't just block South American IPs because we deal with them. And the same can be said about India or Asia. We, uh, have, we manage and handle a huge amount of data. And uh, how has Enig Media helped us with their technology after a number of pilot studies? Well, it doesn't really have to do uh, with our dealings with uh, the world outside, but rather with our manufacturing plants. Just like the Iparlat representative said, uh, is securing our manufacturing plants. Because on the shop floor, we found some time ago that when Danobat or Goiti, whatever machine was connected and sent machines to our data centers, our customers uh, were a little bit concerned at the beginning. What are you going to do with my data, with all my facts and figures? And well, we did convince them that uh, we were certified that uh, it would all be safe for them. There were no hazards. Then the second step after that was hmm, the customers being concerned that our connection or them being connected with us it might cause them trouble or difficulties with other machines they had on their shop floor. That was the next level of problems then, because we manufacture machines that are connected uh, to our customers' networks. Uh, they, our customers are concerned. Well, we should be concerned as well. Uh, is our customers' network in good condition, because if it isn't, then there might be downtime and we might be liable or they might want to make us 
responsible for it. That's the situation. We might have a machine in Australia, in India, whatever. Uh, we do the testing, things go beautifully. And then all of a sudden, uh, because of a crypto locker or whatever it is, the machine stops working correctly or stops working completely. At that time, we decided maybe we shouldn't trust so much the customer's security on the sh their shop floor. Because as our colleagues from Iparlat said, sometimes uh, attacks uh, can be done by somebody on the shop floor. It might be an employee, uh, our customer's an employee, or who knows? I mean, because it's not just our machines on the shop floor. The, our customer has machines uh, supplied by other manufacturers and it might be that on a shop floor with a very good secure perimeter uh, the problem is of some other type for instance a machine that doesn't work uh, with Siemens devices uh, might clash with our machine that works with Siemens devices that's when we decided to uh, forget a little bit about uh, security on the perimeter and thinking more about the endpoint security and security for individual machines. And in fact, uh, some customers are already saying because of complexity of manufacturing plants, uh, they might focus mostly on operational issues and not so much about security. They don't want to have to be concerned about that. What does Danovat do? Well, fireworks on the machines, and that's a good start, but we wanted to go beyond that. Am I spoiling everything for you later? Yes, you are. Oh, dear. So let's go back to the beginning. I don't want to spoil your part of the presentation. So what problems did we find at that time? A supplier might come to do maintenance operations or who knows, because of contact with other networks. Our machine might then be connected to uh, machines on the customer shop floor or it might be that other machines that are connected to the cloud. Obviously, uh, we can't guarantee universal security. Uh, we also found problems with unconnected, sorry, uncontrolled connection of OTIT infrastructures. An OT structure that works with particular switches, IT infrastructure connected to other switches, and then because they want to send drawings to the technical office, what happens? Well, there's an undesired connection. That's not so much the situation right now. I don't think that happens particularly. Oh, somebody's laughing. It has happened to some of you there, right? Or it might be a pen drive, a mobile phone, a tablet, a mobile phone that's connected to the battery with a USB connection and that opens an uncontrolled uh, connection or uh, there's a problem with a particular file uh, from the mobile phone. Those are the typical issues that you need to identify. So operational networks that are not particularly designed uh, to defend themselves from attacks because in the past, in the very recent past, they were not connected. They were very much isolated. And because of that, they can't defend themselves in the same manner. They haven't learned to be uh, cyber secure like IT networks uh, do. So why is it that OT networks are sometimes not properly secured? Well, think of the payback period uh, for machine tools. You invest, it's a big expenditure, and you want it to work beautifully for 30 years. 
That's not the case with a computer, right? So why do we have those expectations? Uh, they, they have computers inside them. They have their own libraries. And uh, it might be a machine uh, with an operating system from 2010 uh, with libraries that can't be updated. So it's not a very good idea, then, uh, connecting that older machine to the internet. Why? Because uh, it has a version of Windows that's completely obsolete and uh, unsecured. Also, depending on the customer, they might want to have a particular type of machine, Fagor, Siemens, uh, from a particular supplier or manufacturer. And each manufacturer has specificities for a number of different features, including security. So that adds to the complexity of that context. When you update something, whatever, you need uh, to start from scratch and get the machine working properly again. Every time you do an update, maybe three year, uh, three months, every three months. And uh, in Windows 10, it's not three months, right? It's all the time, which is completely unthinkable uh, in an industrial environment where operations need to run perfectly 24-7. And then some people say, oh, well, let's just isolate the machine and not have it connected. Well, that's not the idea, because uh, other machines need to get information on that machine because it's a connected environment. So it's not as simple as just isolating a particular machine, because more and more we need facts and figures uh, from machines. We need data. Uh, machine manufacturers need that data as well, so we need to be able to communicate with them. Another typical situation would be encrypting, right? Let's encrypt all our messages, which is why uh, we're here today with Enig Media. So why do you encrypt a field bus if your uh, computational capacity for chips is limited? ESL.2, can I do that? No, I can't because processors don't have that, those capabilities because of problems with latency, which is why uh, we uh, learned about the encrypting algorithm uh, by Enig Media, and uh, we liked it and started talking to them. That slide says that 67% of companies uh, working with critical infrastructures uh, suffer attacks these days. So what do we need then uh, to overcome these difficulties? Well, we need to be able to protect the machine uh, at the same time as it can communicate and connect. We need uh, to allow any type of secure communications. Why do I tell you this? Because some of our customers have over 15,000 machines uh, installed for production. So when, when you tell them we need to cyber securitize the machine, what does that mean? That I need to go to 15 different, 15,000 different plants or locations or sites? Well, that's not practical, right? We need to deploy those solutions massively without a undue impact for the customer or for us, because security, uh, for security updates are basic. Talking about vulnerabilities and CVEs, for instance, updates are basic, and uh, we have automated that process pretty much. Let me go back to the beginning. Am I telling you here that you shouldn't use firewalls? Not at all. You need a firewall. But you need something else, because a firewall uh, can help me uh, decide if a machine should communicate with another machine. But field buses, that's the way machines communicate amongst them or with each other. So I can talk to Gérard, Gérard can talk to me, Fine, well and good, but uh, some 
industrial protocols use the OT network uh, at the plant, uh, and because of that, information might be tampered with or manipulated. And the solution uh, can then be uh, to encrypt that information. That's why we, start, why we started talking to Enig Media, thanks to a cooperation program. Uh, we liked the fact uh, they're a local company that has uh, what looked like a very powerful encrypting algorithm, and we were right. It has worked really, really well. That graph uh, says how the system uh, sends uh, information to the cloud. And I don't want to tell you too much about this, because it's for Gerard really to, to say it, if I leave any time for him to say anything. And encrypting uh, is a very delicate ma matter, uh, which is why we wanted to subcontract it with somebody who really knows what they're doing. Gerard, the floor is all yours now. Well, let me just say that uh, when we went to install the system, you went for a cup of coffee, you came back, and it was all done. Is that true or not? Absolutely. That was absolutely the case. Uh, installation was practically immediate, and that's what we wanted. So what is our system at Enig Media? We have small customers. And uh, we put customers uh, just next to the PLC. That's the basis, the start. But for that, you need, you normally need a permission from the manufacturer, uh, which is not always very practical. That's why we use the, uh, this idea of a customer. This client, client cipher. A little bit like the old, old ADSL telephony devices. And thanks to that, uh, communications will be ciphered. And all of that uh, is managed by the web admin. The beauty of it is that we isolate PA PLCs uh, on the shop floor as if there were bubbles or islands. So. Th they can't be attacked. What are the advantages of using these bubbles? Well, uh, we can uh, protect against both internal and external threats. Because the trick is that a PLC uh, tr protects the traffic uh, by segmenting the network. Whereas in our system, we isolate each individual device so that we can decide uh, who and how and when can talk to these devices. And another part of a trick is that uh, we work with OT networks. When uh, the solutions are attempted uh, for buses or cables, uh, that's a mistake because of delay, because of lags. Signals uh, can't be delayed very much. For Ethernet, for instance, it would be 120 milliseconds, whereas for OT communications, it would be 10 milliseconds. We uh, give data in 0 0.8 milliseconds. That's our added value, and that's uh, the advantage our technology provides. I think that's probably all for me, unless you have questions or comments from the floor. Thank you for your attention. The idea is protecting OT data uh, by using firewalls, logically, but uh, uh, going beyond that, uh, more over and above that.